And like I always start out with a blanco, which is the tr uh, tried and true and the, the, the best expression of the agave. So let's go ahead and start this tasting. One fun fact, and this always wows people when we drink Glace Azul, is that these bottles have a bell. The Blanco has a bell, the Reposado has a bell. I'm not sure if the, I think the, the Joven has a bell, but I don't want to ding, yep. I don't want to ding the paint on these. But these all have these beautiful bells and every time that we pour out a shot of Glace Azul at my restaurant, we go ahead and ding the bell. The Mezcales have more like decorative and ornate um, designs and uh, the Durango is a beaded, um, a beaded cap and then this Guerrero has a very uh, unique etched art on I think what it seems to be a wooden cap. So it has this really unique um, hummingbird art on the cap. So let's go ahead and pour. And as we pour, we want to go ahead and then talk about how important for Clase Azul and their branding is this artisan and this artistry of their bottle. So all of these bottles are handmade, hand painted by the Masawa indigenous tribe. So the Masawas are these indigenous artisans and they uh, originate from the central state of Mexico, Michoacán and Querétaro. And these Mesaguas are um, the people that are directly involved with this artistry, this, this piece uh, of art that goes into every single bottle of Tequila Clase Azul. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Let's kick back, let's get a little bit comfortable. The Blanco Tequila, again, let's go ahead and look at the body of the tequila. Crystal clear in color, very nice legs. The nosing, definitely, I can, I can definitely notice some of those agave components. Citrus forward, for sure. Roasted agave right there on the nose. A little bit of pepper. So yeah, it definitely follows suit with those traditional components of a, a well-produced Blanco tequila. It's slightly astringent, but that might be because this is the very first amount of tequila I have all day. And after talking all day, my, my tongue's getting a little dry. So that astringency might be influenced by that, but let's go ahead and give it another sip. Even, I think even my stomach's growling. I don't know how much food I had to eat. So as I let that tequila sit on the palate, those aromas of agave are kind of lost in really a kind of a vanilla forward, very sweet expression, sweet component is really all that we can kind of pinpoint. Slightly peppery. I can begin to pick up some of those agave components. But again, I think um, those sweeter, I think it's more of like an orange. I think that's where like some of those citrus aromas are coming through on the palate, on the flavor. But it's more of like a candied orange. As I begin to drink it a little bit more, it gets a little bit more smooth. Some of that astringency is lost. Again, people are very tough with the Clase Azul brand. They want to, you know, be very critical and, you know, Clase Azul is just a marketing gimmick and it's just the bottles, you're paying for the bottle. You know, but at the end of the day, you know, we're working with um, a tequila company that is kind of paving their own way in the market. They are really setting a standard for, uh, for artistry and if I'm paying just for the bottle, like I'm gonna keep paying for the bottle because there are people that are putting their time, their effort, their craftsmanship into building and into delivering these uh, very beautiful uh, creations of tequila. 
Uh, in terms of the flavor and in terms of what I'm tasting, um, I would definitely rate this about, I would give this about a B. It's not anything too crazy and too over the top, like um, that is very agave forward that I look for in a tequila. But it's not, um, it's not average, it's definitely above average. Yeah, as I continue to drink it a little bit more, it definitely has that peppery finish, slight hints of agave, but but really like sweet, like a citrus sweet, like I'm like I'm biting into an orange. All right, now I typically only like to do only one tequila, but because I have so many to choose from this evening, I'm gonna go ahead and do the Joven expression as well. Um, this Hoven expression, like we mentioned earlier, it, it resembles kind of like, like a sunset. It's, it's a very beautiful bottle, um, all black and gold. So the gold, the Hoven, is a blended tequila, blanco, a special batch of eight month French oak reposado, and then that seven year American whiskey and sherry barrel aged tequila. Oh, and I forgot to ring the bell since we're pouring out another shot. Now, I've had this tequila in the past. I've already tried it before. I mean, I've tried every single tequila, but I'm gonna give you guys again my honest review and my honest opinion about Clase Azul Gold, Oro, which is the Joven. Now we're putting this in a much more refined glass, which is my um, tequila flute. It's a crystal tequila flute, which again, this is what I drink out of when I'm here at the house. I like to feel a little bit more, you know, fancy, you know, pinkies up kind of vibe. <laughs> so yeah, it has a really beautiful golden color, slightly amber, not too dark, but a nice golden color. The legs, the tequila clings really well to the glass. But yeah, that crisp, golden, slightly amber color. Something that I noticed when I first drank this tequila is that it's like a very citrus forward expression. So we got some of those complexities of that extrañejo, the complexities of the barrel. Some of those sweet components of the sherry are pulling through. But definitely for me, is it just like a citrus forward aroma. Slightly smoky. I can pick up a little bit of smoke and it's like some of the earthy characteristics as well. I think that's where that smoky earthiness component. I'm picking up some of those fruit, some of those grapes, some of those fruit components. So yeah, let's go ahead and give it a try. Salud. Very tannic, right away on the mouth feel. It's a very velvety expression with those oaking, those oaking complexities. I can definitely taste the oak. I think that's the first thing that I taste is the oak. But again, for me, that citrus forward component, those fruity citrus forward components, I don't know what the ratio of the blend is, but I do pick up a lot of that plata. A lot of the Blanco tequila is resembled in this gold. I don't know the ratios of how they're blending this Joven, but definitely a lot of that plata is coming through. But yeah, it has an incredible mouthfeel. As I let it sit on the palate and as I let it open up, Again, the, the flavors and the aromas, you have to let your tequila sit, you have to let it open up, you aerate it, you swirl it, so that you can start picking up some of those different components and nuances. Mm. 
yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely noticing those fruity components as well. I, I really think, I, I don't want to, I'm going to make a guess, but I really think if, in terms of the ratios, it's definitely heavy on that plata because again, I'm picking up those fruity components, that citrus forward expression. On the palate, you do notice the oak. It's like a very well refined expression of the Blanco as they blend it with those sherry and French oak aged expressions. Now the French oak also imparts a heavier tannic component to the tequila, which again, that velvetiness on the palate is really what makes this tequila joven very special. So again, I think, um, my, I think I've had a little bit too much now of tequila. I guess I can put this one back too. Again, today, uh, to round out our conversation tonight, um, I had a great time talking about Tequila Clase Sul, here kicking it at my house, showcasing some of my high-end expressions and ultra luxury expressions of tequila. Now, I'm definitely by choice more of a Blanco traditionalist ancestral tequila drinker so these high-end expressions are really when i have my friends over or i want to you know show off a little bit of my collection and the types of tequilas that i have but as well as we notice most of these bottles are empty which goes to, you know goes to show that i do like drinking these tequilas on my own time when i have my friends over and again like let's go ahead and you know have an open mind about these luxury tequilas that might be using abocantes but that create a unique drinking experience as much as I like that time-honored expression of agave, um, definitely my mind is open and the creativity is open to the tequilas that promote this ultra luxury experience with the abocantes, with maybe some of these velvety or luxurious barrel agings. So please be open-minded about your tequilas. Abocantes necessarily don't have to be a bad thing in tequila production. And again, thank you guys for watch, uh, watching this episode tonight. Go ahead and leave me your comments, uh, add your questions, like the video, please subscribe to my channel. And if you haven't, check me out on my Instagram, check me out on my TikTok, Tequila Bay Official. Go ahead and give me a follow, send me a personal message. If you completely disagree with my review of Tequila Clase Sul, I do heavily enjoy Clase Sul. If you disagree with the review, leave me a comment, leave me your opinions, and I'd love to have a good conversation about it. But again, thank you for tuning in tonight. And on our next episode of Tequila Talks, we're going to be talking about one of my newer favorite brands of tequila, which is Tequila Volcán de Mi Tierra a non-additive tequila for those non-additive drinkers. Please tune in and see what I have to say about a non-additive non tequila. But Tequila Volcan has a Blanco, a Reposado, and a Añejo Cristalino expression that I will do a good review on and I'll give you guys my opinions about a new and a great brand of tequila. Thank you guys for watching and I, I look forward to seeing you guys again soon. Adios, salud.